Hello there, in this video I'm going to be showing you how I sharpen one of these. A plate, well, not one of the, hang on, hang on. Hold your horses. Hold your horses. A plane blade. What is the difference between this and a chisel? Well, you're about to find out. Let's go. Right, firstly, disassembling the plane. So, in you come. Right, so, ignore the ghastly rust on this. I, I think I left it in the toolbox for a bit too long. I need to put some oil on it, but in a future video, I'll show you how to get rid of all that, actually. There you go, good video idea. So, sorry, I just went along with that then. So, on here, you've got a cap iron. So, that just works on a cam lock like this. So, all you do, lift up that top bit. That comes off like so. And in here, you've got a adjustable screw, and that basically adjusts the tightness of that. So if I loosen it off, like so, and then snap this down, it's really easy. It's a bit wobbly. So what you don't want to be doing when you take the blade out is loosening this. You should just be able to have it all on a quick release of that. So to adjust that quick release, just change this until it's at a suitable setting. So it gets around there. No, a bit less than that. There you go, tighten that up. On like that, snaps down, all in there, rock solid. Let's get it out. And then here, you have got your blade and your chip breaker. So blade is underneath, chip breaker, there's your screw that holds it all together. So I'll show you how to disassemble that. Right, so to take off the chip breaker, as you would expect, just a massive screw there. This is where a little plain screwdriver like this comes in handy, because when you've got a massive one on here, it's just a bit cumbersome. So all I'll do is take that off. And when you take off the chip breaker, what is good practice is to not just rip it off like just any direction, like I just did there. Best thing to do is slide it back, twist it round, and then off like that. The reason is, if you slide it forward and you get into the practice of doing that, after you sharpen your plane blade, you'll likely slide it forward and just smash up this front edge that you've just sharpened. So that's not ideal. So when it comes off, slide it back, round 90 degrees, and then slide it forwards so that this screw is able to come out the hole on the plane blade, like so. So then you have safely disassembled your chip breaker from your blade. The next thing to do, especially with Lai Nielsen and Hock chip breakers, is establish which one you want to sharpen. I've seen it a few times where people have accidentally sharpened the chip breaker instead of the blade because they do look quite similar. So chip breaker goes on top and the blade is the bigger one. Do not sharpen this. This has a very important function in a plane and if you start messing around with this edge on it, then you're gonna have some trouble with it. So leave that alone. We are focusing on the blade. Much the same with chisels. I work with a 25 degree primary bevel and a 30 degree secondary bevel on plane blades. There are a few occasions where I'll sharpen a 50 degree angle on the secondary bevel and instances of that would be when I'm trying to reduce tear out. I will be covering that in a future video. So for now, we're gonna do 25 degrees primary bevel, 30 degrees secondary. So to start with, you can see that the secondary bevel is getting quite big. And like I said in the chisel video, when that starts getting a third to a half of the way up this primary bevel, that's usually where I will start regrinding the primary bevel because it becomes more efficient that way to start from fresh rather than sharpen all this metal again. So with that in mind, let's take it to the tool neck. <laughs> Right, so firstly, grinding this 25 degree primary bevel. So I'm gonna pop that in the square edge jig. Now, like I said in the chisel video, I'm using the Tormek because I have access to one. And yes, I know I am fortunate too, but you can do this with a bench grinder if you are extremely careful at not overheating the blade. Take a little bit off, quench it in water, a little bit off, quench it in water until you get the result you need. I would always advise using a jig for that to get it spot on 25 degrees instead of freehanding it. Also, you could do it on a coarse diamond stone or water stone, as long as you keep it flat, obviously. But like I say, I'm using the Tormek because I have one available to me. So firstly, I am just going to grade the stone on this to get it to a nice coarse grip. Also get the water trough up. There we go. So this is the difference between a Tormek and a high-speed grinder in that it's water-cooled and it's slow running, so you can't overheat your tool. There we go. Lovely and coarse. And now let's get grind into the 25 degree primary bevel. So 
So here we go, almost here now. Taking about four to five minutes because this is a very, very hard steel. A2. So, yeah, pretty solid stuff. There we go. So that's all freshly ground to 25 degrees now. Now, like I said in the previous video on chisel sharpening, what Tormek recommends do a lot of the time is then to take this stone to a 1000 grit by rubbing this stone grader on it and then taking it to the honing wheel and sharpening it like that. But you just end up grinding away so much metal. Despite this being a slow speed machine, I find it much more controlled to do the secondary bevel on a sharpening stone. So that's where we're gonna go next. Okay, so onto the sharpening stones now. Now I've got my water stone soaking here and I'm gonna start off by flattening the 6,000 grit on my diamond flattening plate. So a few strokes back and forth. That's all good, that's flat. And then I'll switch it to the 1000 grit. And again, like I said in the chisel video, the reason I do it this way around is so that I don't contaminate the 6000 grit with the 1000 grit stone. So I'll just wash that slurry off. There we go. Flat water stone. I'm just gonna wash that off as well. Oh, let's cover my workbench in water. Oh well, good job it's finished in Osmo. Product placement. Right, so we're gonna get the blade out of the square edge jig on the Tormek and pop it in the Lionelson Honey Guide with the long jaws already fitted. Now, if you want to know why I'm using the Lionelson Honey Guide with the long jaws, be sure to watch my honing guide video I did at the start of this series. So nip that up. I'm gonna sharpen a 30 degree bevel on here. Get that on my stop block. Nip it up a little bit more. There's the thingy, there it is. There you go. So 30 degrees, ready to go in there. So. What is the difference between sharpening a plain blade and a chisel? Well, on plain blades, what I like to do is put a camber on them. Now it's basically a very, very shallow curve. And one of the main benefits about putting a camber on a blade is that you can actually focus exactly where you want to take away a shaving. So say if you're edge jointing a bit of wood, for example, and this side was a little bit higher than this side, what you could do is focus the plane on there and the camber would take out more this side than it would there without you having to mess with the blade angle or anything like that. You can just center the plane on that section you want to take off material and do it like that. And there's a few other benefits as well, but that's the main one for me. That's where I find it most useful. So to get that camber onto the blade, what I will do is start off on the 1000 grit stone. Just gonna give it a little bit more juice. There we go. Right, so 1000 grit. All I'm gonna do, hold the plane on there, drag it back, one, two, three. And this is with even pressure. And all I've done there is started the secondary bevel. So on the end of this, there is a tiny, tiny secondary bevel that is almost too small to see. And that is all we need for the 1000 grit stone. So before I switch it to the 6000, again, I'm just gonna clean off the roller because that's gonna have a little bit of grit from the 1000 grit stone and just dab this edge get rid of any remaining water, flip it over, and there we go, we're on the 6,000 grit. So let's go with that now. Little bit of juice on there. Right, so we've got a straight secondary bevel at the moment. And again, I'm just gonna give that one, two, three. And there we go, so that has started polishing that secondary bevel. Now, to get the camber in it, what I'm gonna do is pick five points on the blade. So I'm gonna get the outer points, the middle one, and then two intermediate points on there as well. And all I'm gonna do on the two outer points, I'm gonna do 10 strokes forward and back, 10 strokes forward and back. Then on the intermediate ones here, I'm gonna do five. And then in the central one, I'm gonna do two or three probably. So I'm not gonna put the pressure right on the edge because as you can see, that tips the honing guide. We don't want that because that just creates a horrible round over on the edge of the blade and I mean, it doesn't really affect it that much, but for an aesthetic point of view, I don't like it. So, probably anal of me, but oh well. Right, so pressure on the edge of the blade. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. On this side now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you might be able to see there that you can actually see where the metal is being taken off more heavily. So on the outer edges, there is a lot of swarf on the central part. Not a lot. So 10 strokes either side, we've done that. Now we're gonna do five on the intermediate points. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then in the central one, one, two, three. And what I like to do here is on a microscopic level, I suppose, and it's probably just me being anal again, that's created lots of different facets on that camber. 
So to get rid of those, what I'm going to do is start dragging the plane back, but transfer the pressure from this left side to the right hand side as I drag it back. So pressure on the left hand side, as I drag it back, I'm transferring it to the right hand side before the plane falls off the edge, obviously. Now I'm going to do the same, right to left, all the way on the right. And there we go. On a clean water stone, you can actually try and draw a cross in it as you do it. There was a David Charlesworth video where he did that, and it was um, quite impressive. Now, on the edge of this plane blade, there is now a camber on it. Very shallow. Do not worry about this creating U-shaped grooves in all of your work when you're playing them, because the difference that it makes is so minuscule. It's mainly just for your edge jointing. And also, something I forgot to mention earlier, it takes the corners out of the cut as well. So when you do planing, you don't start leaving tracks in the wood where the corners start digging in. Instead, they are lifted out of the cut and you're only taking small scoops out here and there. So now, let's get rid of the burr left over on the back of this blade. So take it out the honing guide and to do this like i said before do not drop the blade straight on the stone like that because it has the potential to sort of ruin that burr you do want to get rid of it but you want to do it gently so i tend to do this by starting with the blade off the edge of the stone and bring it on with very light pressure drag it back there we go so you can actually see the track that it left there as it was removing that burr a few bits back and forth there we go that is flat. Another little nifty trick that you may have seen on sharpening stones is actually putting a six inch ruler on the edge of the stone and then putting the plane blade on it and polishing the bevel like that. So you're actually slightly elevating the blade and polishing the very edge of it. This isn't an issue with plane blades. It's quite a good way of doing it. It polishes the edge really nicely and focuses all of the attention there. But do not do this with chisels because it ruins their functionality. A chisel needs a flat back. A plane doesn't because it's mounted like this, so it doesn't really affect it at all, really. So I usually do this with my plane blades, but I have somehow misplaced my six inch ruler. So I won't do it this one. That's still sharp enough on there. So next thing I'm going to do is take it to my strop, which is this nice leather thing here. Again, a little bit of the good stuff on there, bit of this super fine paste. And much the same as a chisel, all I'm going to do is pop the blade on there, elevate it until I see the shadow on the end disappear and in this case, you see all the paste squeeze out the end and just drag it back. Then after you've worked a few times on the bevel, you're going to do it on the flat on the back, drag it back. There you go, on the bevel again and once more on the back. Voila, there we go. Right, so let's just get all this crap off and that is a stupidly sharp plane blade stupidly stupidly sharp so there we go that is how you produce the camber on a plane blade now before you go off and do it one thing you really need to know about this is when that blade gets blunt after a few minutes or hours of use whatever when you take it back to sharpen on here obviously you're going to get this on your 30 degree stop get that angle spot on again when you take it back to your diamond stone what you do not want to be doing is that exact same process again where you do 10 strokes on either corner and five strokes at intermediate point and three in the middle the reason for this is you end up putting a massive curve on the end of your blade if you think of it like this after 10 sharpens you have done 100 strokes on either corner you have done 50 on the intermediate points and you have only done 30 in the middle. The difference between 100 strokes and 30 in the middle there, massive. So instead, what you want to be doing is remember the five points, but only do five strokes on each of them this time. So I'm going to go on here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Intermediate points. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five in the middle. And that is keeping the curve on the edge of your blade, but maintaining it at a constant radius. You do not want to be changing your bench pane blades into scrub pane blades because that would just make an absolute mess of it. But there we go. As you can see, nice and easy to sharpen plane blades. Little bit more complicated than a chisel, but overall really not much to worry about. So the same rules for that apply on water stones, on diamond stones, on oil stones, on scary sharp sandpaper, whatever. 
exactly the same rules, but that is how I sharpen most of my plane blades. Exceptions to this would be if I had a designated shooting board plane where I wanted the blade to be perfectly square, then I wouldn't bother putting a camber on it because there's no need to and it's a little bit extra effort. But otherwise, pretty much on every single one of my planes, including my block plane, I have a camber because I find it so incredibly useful. So in a future video, I'm going to show you how I set up my planes and how I get them taking those silky smooth shavings. And yeah, um, I hope you find that video useful. Again, chuck any, I really shouldn't be waving this around. Chuck any questions in the comments, start all the fights you want. I'll get involved and yeah, give you some, yeah. <laughs> I've got a sharp blade, watch yourself. Yeah, see you next time.